Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're talking Chevy Cruze and we got a lot of things going on. AC off due to high engine temp. Our engine needle is at cold or zero, not even moving. And we were going to replace our radiator sensor because that's what fixes it, right? But when we pulled it out, it broke. We want to show you where we're at. Let's take a look. All right, YouTubers, in front of us is our 2012 Chevy Cruze. Here's what we're working on today. This is the radiator sensor that goes down below in your radiator and it works together with the water outlet valve sensor to give you the proper coolant and engine temperature. However, when attempting to take out the old sensor, look what happened. It broke. And if you align these two up, as you can see here, the back side is missing the entire copper portion that feeds into the engine. And here's your electrical leads that go inside. It looks like it just fell apart, but it's old. And this goes inside this little probe here. And as the engine warms up and the coolant warms up, this probe also warms up. And inside here, the electrical leads and sensor gives you that temperature reading. So what I did was first disconnect the negative terminal to your battery. Safety first, cut all electrical power to your engine right here. Go ahead and loosen up that. It's going to loosen up the clamp. Over here, you've got an additional flathead screw. Go ahead and loosen up that to loosen up this clamp. Once you loosen up both flathead screws, this comes off, set that aside. And then this portion right here is connected to the tip or head of your thermostat. And to disconnect this, just carefully pull this clip up and it releases its locking tab down below. And then you can carefully just shift this hose off the head or tip of your thermostat. Once that is released, you have a chance to carefully adjust the hose to the side and then you can come down below and right here is where the opposite connection point goes. And it has the exact same clip. You'll carefully shift this clip up and once it's up, it releases its lock and you can carefully shift this hose rearward or back off of its connection point. And it is extremely important before doing this, make sure you properly drain your entire coolant system and we have a video scrolling above right now that shows you the proper way to drain your system because if you don't drain it and you pull this hose off the thermostat and the radiator coolant is going everywhere however if you're just replacing your sensor you have the option to get down in there unplug the electrical connection lead or connection point that feeds onto this portion here and you also have this clip right here and you will carefully pull the clip up and out. Do not drop this in the engine, it'll be tough to find. After that, have the new part ready and carefully shift your old sensor out of your radiator. And at this point, if you don't do it fast, radiator coolant is going to come spilling out very quickly. So immediately after removing the old sensor, set that aside and install the brand new sensor. And right here is a rubber gasket and press that in place and re-secure the clip. However, I wanna show you how we got the broken part out of our engine or radiator. And this tool right here, look at the angle on that. I went ahead and carefully lowered the pliers in place and shifted this open and slid it right into the hole where the broken sensor is, grabbed a hold of it and carefully pulled it out. Without this tool, YouTubers, I literally would not have been able to get that out. So from here, we are going to carefully install the new sensor. Real quick, for your convenience, there is the Duralast part number for the temp sensor. Very important. This is a different sensor part number than the water outlet valve sensor. So if you're doing the radiator sensor, make sure you get the proper number. I'm not sure if you can see this, YouTubers, but here is the old part. There it is, completely broken. There's where I was able to get my pliers in and grab a hold of it and pull it out. It was pretty convenient. That's because of the pliers and the angle of the pliers. All right, YouTubers, new sensor in hand. Carefully position it in a way where you can insert it. Now, take a look at the connection point. It is facing toward us or up, and that connection point must be facing down because as you can see here, it hits that plastic wall of that hole, shifting it down, it allows it to go in, and now you have that gap right there for the clip to go on and lock this sensor in place and allow it to create that watertight or coolant tight seal. Making progress, 
the clip is installed again the electrical connection point has to be facing down and it goes into a cutout slot on the bottom of this circular insert here and by positioning that properly allows you to slide it all the way in to allow the gap to come into the visible window and secure that clip from here your electrical connection point that is how ours is positioned carefully insert this and push up until you hear the clicking sound just like that next position the radiator hose back into place that part goes on the connection down on the radiator and we'll do that first I'll need both hands as you can see here I'll align it properly and secure it and once it's on that connection I will push down on that clip make sure this hose connection is pushed on and secure from here drop that clip that locks that hose onto that connection we'll do the same thing up top carefully shift this into place and make sure that's on and drop the clip just like that from here we will install that air hose make a progress very important these clamps have little cutouts that you have to align them properly before you secure them and as you can see here there's the indent right there I'll shift that in place from here it's also a seven millimeter bolt head you can use a ratchet and socket if you need to all right youtubers hose is secured go ahead and re-secure your negative terminal to your battery and from here you need to properly fill your coolant system with fluid And in the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance on how to do that, scrolling above is a link. Definitely check that out because there is a right way and there is a wrong way. Do it the right way. All right, YouTubers, we are back from our test drive. And good news, no leaks, which is great. Hopefully this helps. And hopefully, to begin with, you don't have a sensor that breaks off inside the radiator. From here, do us a favor, YouTubers. Below the video, you'll see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us and we would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.